There it is. It's a porthole. I like it. You better like it. I spent three hours on it. Today's video is sponsored by Beard Club. On the last episode of our Turbo 670 drag rail, we took it to the drag strip and we sent parts into the atmosphere on our drive system. Straight to the moon. So in today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we're unveiling our new transmission system and we're addressing a few other issues that we need uh, to take care of. And hopefully by the end of the episode, we're gonna have our new transmission installed drive it out the shop and have it ready to go to the track again. Drive it out of the shop? Yeah. I say burn out of the shop. Burn out of the shop. Yeah. So when we were at the track, we took this thing down and uh, it accelerated so hard. When the belt started slipping, that's when the engine went over 8,000 RPM and uh, that's when things kind of went haywire. So we have our new drive system. Drum roll please. That is off of a 2016 Polaris Razor rated way over 100 horsepower. And the back here is from another company and it's supposed to work with our drive pulley. Now, it's a lot bigger than what we had. So we're gonna have to figure out a, uh, a way to cram it into this frame. It's as big as my head. I know, it's pretty awesome, isn't I it? I like it. Yeah. So. Uh, we're probably going to have to cut the frame here. I'm thinking maybe be maybe adding a little halo or something in the frame here where we can service this torque converter drive pulley without removing the engine. That would be really cool. What do you think, Charles? Uh, yeah, we definitely called in reinforcements because we got the beef. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're also going to be uh, eliminating this drive, uh, this, 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 Jack shaft. Thank you. I can't think. We just got back from a long trip. This jack shaft is going to be eliminated, which is going to lighten things up. And less rolling resistance. Less rolling resistance. So this thing ought to be even faster down the track than last time. Well, you know, didn't quite make it the whole way down, did we? Yeah, we got a, we got a DNF on that one. <laughs> yeah, but it was awesome for two seconds. So the guys are starting to measure to figure out just how we're going to get this to fit beside our engine in the frame because clearance was already tight with the much shallower 780 torque converter. I'm gonna tell you a little bit why we decided to go with something like this over a Harley Davidson five-speed transmission. I was really excited about the possibility of putting a five-speed Harley Davidson transmission in here and the rest of the guys were too, but this is gonna be a much better option for this scenario for a few reasons. So number one, all of the power that this engine makes goes through a one and a quarter keyed chromoly axle, which is fine if we have a nice, gentle, consistent torque curve like a CVT gives us. But if you add the huge load changes that would come from first gear, clutch dump, uh, power shifting second, third, fourth, we'd probably be tearing up our rear axle and swapping to something else would no doubt be a lot heavier. It would be cool, but a lot heavier. And the second main reason we're sticking with the CVT setup is for boost. Again, every time you shift a transmission, your engine loses all that boost and needs to build it back up. Not with the CVT, because here we're bumping it up to the start line, hitting the gas, and that's it. It builds boost and it's sticking at that peak 30 PSI boost. What? until the end of the track. So those are the two reasons why we decided to stick with a CVT instead of a Harley Davidson transmission. If this doesn't work, we'll be back at the drawing board and who knows, we might give it a shot, but I thought I'd uh, just clear the air a little bit. This is why we waited so long to switch the drive system. We knew what we had wasn't gonna work, but I mean, we're gonna have to cut the frame here. Yeah, unfortunately. All, all in the name of horsepower. I'm okay That's right. with it. I'm okay with it. Uh, but we figured out a pretty good idea on how to cut this frame and hopefully not compromise the strength of it. We hope. You've seen it. Everybody here at Cars and Cameras has a beard or some kind of facial hair or is working on it. But having a top-notch beard requires some work, which brings us to today's sponsor, Beard Club. Beard Club is the leader in beard-first men's growth and grooming with their quality hardware and consumables to help you grow a thicker and fuller-looking beard. 
check it out. I've been using the trimming kit to keep my beard right. It comes with the PT45 trimmer, which is also included in the grooming kit. And this thing is as sturdy as a Manco Dingo go-kart. Plus, it's got great battery life, and it's the same trimmer that NBA player James the Beard Harden uses. I really like the beard shampoo, sandalwood oil, beard growth vitamin spray, and beard cream combo that comes with this kit because they contain natural ingredients and keep my beard smelling fresh and looking hydrated. No more itchy beard problems either. I also had to try my hand at the straight razor and it was awesome. And the beard oil in particular smells fantastic. The trimming kit also includes sandalwood balm for you longer beard guys out there wanting to keep your beard in shape while feeling softer than ever before. Now, if you're working on growing a beard like our production assistant Carson, the growth kit is for you. It's got all types of sprays to strengthen your hairs, oils to prime your follicles, and a derma roller to kick your slower follicles into top gear. But no matter what type of beard you have, Beard Club has the perfect kit for you, and over 2 million beards already agree. So head to beardclub.com slash cars and cameras and use my code cars and cameras at checkout for 20% off your order. If you're not sure what kit to get, you can always take their beard quiz and they'll personally recommend a grooming kit that's tailored to your beard's needs. Thank you again to Beard Club. Now let's get back to the video. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be getting this chain and jack shaft out of the way. So when we put our new jack shaft in, we'll be able to raise and improve on the design. Uh, and this is because the old pulley would sometimes, you know, it get would, in the dirt. It would bottom out. When, yeah. we'd, when we'd pull the thing into the trailer, it would hit the trailer. So uh, this is gonna improve it a lot. Now that I got the holes patched up with some HVAC tape, on the firewall, Ike feels a little bit safer from any unnecessary fluid spraying at him. Yep. But first things first is we need to try and, now that we've got the engine moved forward, we need to try and get this new driver. But as you guys know, it's not going to fit. So we've come up with a notch kit for the frame. Cut so, out from oh yeah. the uh, Crossfire Langmere Pro. But the notch kit, what we're planning on doing is we're planning on sandwiching two of these on the frame and tacking it in place and everything you see in this middle section is getting cut out so we have full access to our primary and because our original problem with this we had to remove the engine every time we wanted to adjust anything on here not anymore not anymore so with let's, this solution let's get that thing tacked in and cut out so we have the area figured out that we're going to be installing our what'd you call it our cars and cameras frame notch kit our frame notch kit so first thing we got to do is we got to grind the uh, paint so we can have something to weld to. All right, boom, there we go. Okay, now comes the hard part. You want to weld it? I sure don't. Here goes nothing, cover. Yep. That. That. I'm in the danger zone. So now that we have these two pieces welded in, I feel pretty confident to cut the center section out. It's time to go fast. Nah. Didn't seem to move. It didn't seem to move. I That's think good. it's holding it pretty good. Uh-oh. You'll be fine. We're losing our machine washers. There it is. It's a porthole! Oh, it's done. It's Dude, it's like a ship! We got a porthole! <laughs> it's a tight fit. Look at that! Tight. Oh man. And we made it oval shaped so we can adjust the tension of the belt. Yeah. So the engine has plenty of room to go backwards. That's this part. Um, yeah. I got the uh, 7 8 jack shaft hung in there. Uh, I've mocked up the bearing hangers and I had to cut out some really thick pieces of steel to match the thickness and extend it out to the secondary pulley. 
and we're going to be extending this because we are eliminating the jack shaft that we originally had on the frame but we'll get into that later i need to move on to this so i can start encasing this with some inch flat one inch flat bar we're just going to go like this all the way on the top side and i just told john i'm going to do the inside to make it a little bit extra stronger I guess the key is like where it's flush is to tack just below that and then hammer it because if you hammer where it's not, you can't hammer it back down, I guess. I'm not a body work person, but I've watched, I know how to mess it up, so. Man, this ain't no body work. I don't no, know what no, this not, is. Well, <laughs> I don't know. So our modification to the frame turned out better than I expected. Check it out. So we've got, I'm going to just call this the porthole here. It's kind of oval shaped. We smoothed out the top to make it look a little bit nicer. And uh, here's the benefit. Check it out. We can put our drive pulley in without removing the engine. That means we're gonna be able to service our pulley as well as change the belt without pulling the engine. So this is a, uh, a win for me. Uh, we added a couple of little uh, holes here so we can bolt in a bar tying in the upper frame a lot a lot of y'all are going to say this makes it weaker but you you might be right but we're going to be adding a bar across which is going to be tying it in making it stronger the next thing we're working on charles yes we've got this uh the bar going from the rear axle to the jack shaft we've got to add a little bit of extra length to it because we did move the uh, jack shaft to a new location. We also eliminated one. So that's what we're going to have right here. Here's the new sprocket. And we're, the chain is going to go from here to back there. So we got to add about four more inches on that bar. And uh, then uh, maybe add some paint and uh, I don't know, whatever else we figure out. But that, that's what we've got so far. I'm pretty happy with the results. So we have our chain cut. We're using this ratchet strap to help pull the the axles together so they can be the chain can be nice and tight. Then we're going to be centering up the sprocket, figuring out our brace here, and then we got to do our chain guard next. So, we're getting close, guys. So we got it on there, but it is really tight. So, since it's th this far this way we know the sprocket's got to go the front sprocket's got to go in some because you really want yeah you want this that chain like right in, in the center. center oh yeah so let's see so i still got to go out Oh, it's there. Ah, uh, it's just switch sides, Barry. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the, the sprocket's got a little bit of a wobble to it. So when you see one, see the teeth? Yeah. They're pulling away? Yeah, that's okay. That's, that's fine, right where it's at. All right, so now on to modifying the bracket. So what we're talking about is loosening these three, actually six total bolts for the jack shaft hanger there could be just enough play in that that we can have the right uh, amount of tension on the chain again you don't want too much tension on the chain because well, it'll, it'll get hot quicker yeah more wear slower times chunky chain no good bad stuff the driven pulley in a before the turbo was turning uh like seven to one seven rotations of the driven pulley to one rotation of the rear tire and we ran out of gear about three quarters of the way down the track so we are putting a new gear on it we kind of want something like the five to one ratio so i figured it up on my calculator aka cell phone that this is gonna be the gear that we want. So we've got a 13 gear on the drive, 66 gear on the axle. So we're gonna be installing this 
and hopefully our chain is going to be about right i hope fingers crossed if not then we're going to have to do some weird stuff with the uh, jack shaft so let's get this on and uh fingers crossed oh my what is it's go or blow baby I like it. You better like it. I spent three hours on it. Yeah, it's either going to be welded or spaced off of that. I think that's pretty cool, boys. I like it. It looks cool. So, we're going to remove the chain so we can put a new front gear on it. <laughs> that was under some tension there, buddy. <laughs> kind of like the song. Under pressure. Oh, you lost your well. That's all right. Your key. That's a, that's a pretty big difference there. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. So sixteen to thirteen. Yeah. This right. this this gear was for 120, 130 miles per hour. We don't need to go that fast. Your butt dyno needs calibrating. Uh, now that we've kind of sorted out our gearing and chain issue, I'm gonna move on to filling in this gap right here. That's our jack shaft to axle brace. So I'm going to measure up a piece of flat bar, cut that out, weld it in. And at the same time, we're going to add a tensioner, a roller tensioner. And it's going to be slotted. And I'm going to add another piece of steel to this same bracket once it's finished. And, we're, and it's going to allow us to move this sprocket up and down to tension the chain. And you want it, according to Isaac, you want it as close to this and on the bottom as you can. Uh, yeah, one tick under three and three quarter. Okay. Got her. Yeah. So we're adding the uh, chain guide. Charles has already run the chain through it. And... Oh boy, help me out. Oh, I'm that's okay. Oh no. I know my cool method of putting the chain in just All right, you want to do backfired. It. You want to do it the same way we did it before? That's okay. Yeah. We we had a pretty good system, I promise. It's receding. I'm doing okay. We're we're struggling here, man. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're coming off of there. It's like the chain is. <laughs> ah. Lose the chain. I know, I'm just thinking about it. And we are gonna have to build a tensioner coming off the front here. Okay. So, I think it almost looks like, oh gosh. You know when we put the tensioner here, this is gonna be a problem? So we're gonna have to come up with something where maybe we cut this and maybe make a pivoting bracket so when we put the tensioner on where is the tensioner so the tensioner is going to go around here in this this spot so you want the tensioner to be on the bottom of the chain because all the powers up here at the top so 70 horsepower you don't want it going through this little chain or the sprocket so i'm thinking we're going to have the tensioner here but we're gonna have this where attached to this lower guard. So we move this lower guard up and down and it will be the tensioner. So when you tighten up the chain, the guard moves with it. So we're gonna pause on the chain guide right now because guess what just came in? Our belt. Now this is for like a razor and it is HD, baby. This thing is pretty awesome. So we. We're going to go ahead and try to fit it because, well, we just want to make 100% sure everything's going to work. So it's a good time to stop on this and put this belt on. Oh, yeah. yeah, look at that. That is exactly what we want right there. The other belt actually sunk down into the groove way too far. And that's losing gearing right there. Yeah, we're losing some gearing and stuff. And plus, with the larger belt, we'll have a better, more... More surface area for biting. More, exactly. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Charles. Okay. And as you can see, the belt fits really nicely down into the, the base of that groove, so the width is dead on. 
through this like, but I'm.